Hi. Hello there. <laughs> Are you still awake? I am still awake. Powerful? I'm still awake. I'm not sure about being powerful. Well, first of all, hi. This is the session on accessibility leaders joining hands. <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay. I guess we're done with that. So we're good with that. Okay, so I'll tell you what. Why don't you tell us who you are and I'll tell you who I am. Very good. I'm Michal Rimon and I'm a friend of Caroline, first of all, and the CEO of Access Israel. Caroline, who are you? So I'm Caroline Casey, troublemaker, um, behind the Valuable 500, friend of Michal Rimon, somebody who you cannot say no to, everybody who knows Access Israel, and lover of very colorful fashion at the moment. Yes, with that, it's opposites attract. Uh, Caroline, I know the subject of the of this session was leaders of accessibility and inclusion joining hands. Mm -hmm. But I think that when we did a preview talk, we thought that maybe it's time to talk about something that needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know what, we're just going to roll with this. We're the two um, wild cards of zero. Um, I think what we wanted to talk about today is coming out, actually. Two ways of coming out. As, as we come into the zero conference, we're lucky. We're one of the 300 people physically here in this conference. And there is like thousands of people online. And I just think how hard people are finding it to, to make that adjustment. Yeah. And I think uh, having moderated this conference for 12 years, you'd think at this stage you would be used to it and you're not nervous, but actually this is probably one of the most nerve wracking wow. of all the conferences because it's the first live event I've done in two years to a room that there is hardly anybody in. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's a kind of a very important moment for us just to remember to be kind to ourselves in all this change we're doing. I don't know, is that how you're finding it or? Uh, totally. I think that, that uh, um, we need to understand, it's a, it, we said it's a, it's a little bit being rusty. It's yeah. like you know the moves, yeah. you know how to do it, and you're even looking forward to it. But when you're um, in an event that you are told, and you know thousands of people are watching, yeah. but there is just like, I don't know, 50 people <laughs> in an enormous, uh, <laughs> it, it feels a little strange. Yeah, and you're not getting feedback. So one of the things we started to get used to in, you know, when we've been doing Zoom is, looking at yourself with red lipstick yes <laughs> it, on a zoom i didn't know by the way michael has a setting with red lipstick i i, I didn't have that so wish and touch ups to uh, and touch oh no i did the touch ups okay. but not the, the red lipstick but anyway at least you had yourself sort of to look at or somebody's face now we're doing it to this room and it's the importance of connection yeah. and feedback and the energy that's just missing we don't even have it in zoom and now we're in these big halls and i think what has been really important for me is the trust we have mm -hmm. amongst each other. I mean, if you think about the zero family, I'm not sure lots of us could have done this if we didn't have that family mm -hmm. trust and the big community that Access Israel has built. And I think Martin Essel said it really well today on your webinar. You know, we're not alone. Yeah. And I think this is a moment just to remind yourself that you're not. I think everybody is just finding their way again and that we share together but it's the importance of our families and our networks yeah. in making this happen, don't you think? I, totally, and I felt connected to the subject of this talk. Um, when you're talking about leaders joining hands, I think in a way what we're trying to do is join hands with everybody that is watching us and giving you the, the, the behind, everybody looks very confident, you know? Yeah. I look at Caroline, when Caroline said she feels rusty, it's like, you? You look so natural in this. And still we have to understand and look at what's happening inside. Uh, and I think it's a very important uh, thing, especially for people who are watching this and watching from home, you know, wishing uh, to be hopefully next, we uh, next year here. You have to understand that, first of all, as we said, not everything you see on the outside no. is happening in the inside. No. Uh, even the, the most, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, photographed and, uh, and filmed people have their nerve, it's nervous for them also. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I know that when I started speaking in front of audience, somebody told me, picture the people naked in front of you. <laughs> Doesn't really work, I tried <laughs> that. But, but uh, uh, the idea is to really um, um, understand that the difficulties that you're feeling, it's not yours alone. Yeah, and I think that's the big advice I'd give anybody, because in your session you were saying, how do we do partnerships? How do we do collaborations? I mean, this was the Access Israel webinar. And the one thing I would say is, number one, 
do not judge anybody else. Mm -hmm. Do not assume anything about anybody else. We have no idea what's going on. And I want to refer to a story that uh, you often tell, like when you first came to Zero, like you keep saying eight years ago, but I think it's like about 10 years ago now. Yeah. So you keep saying that you remember seeing me running around moderating and going, oh my God, do you know what I've never told you before? That first year that you saw me, I was actually falling apart inside because wow. my company was closing. And it just shows you this issue of covering. Yeah. And we've just be very, very gentle with each other, I think, as we emerge from this pandemic. We're all going to emerge at different levels. But it also brings into the question the issue of how many people are covering their disability or their difference or their unique needs. And how do we help people speak about what they need? Mm -hmm. And a brilliant example was today when we had a panelist, Alexandra. And she did a really brave thing. She said what she needed. She even wore a Kermit the Frog hat to try and sort of shade the lights in the room, said she didn't want to be monitored for speaking, and she decided to tell everybody what she needed to encourage others to do the same. Totally. So I, I don't know what you're learning from, from, the, from the network. Are you finding that people are willing to come out and speak out more or more vulnerable or? I think that when you understand, you know, we're in a conference now and people are going to conferences all over the world and hopefully now with COVID towards the end, we'll start going again. I think that um, we have to understand that many of the things happen behind the scenes or in the cafeteria. Yeah. And I think that when you create that atmosphere and the connection of trust, of um, uh, connection, of talking, of, of starting to bond, then it's much easier to share the needs, to share what you, you know, to, to, and I think this is a very, you know, I was asked just now in an interview, uh, after being in Vienna so many uh, years, uh, how is the accessibility in Vienna? And I said, I'll tell you the truth. I've been at the UN building, so here it's okay, and, and, and the atmosphere and the people are very, uh, you know, accepting and, and et cetera, and I think um, uh, that's the beauty of being here. So I want to ask a question that I think a lot of people who've watched you over the years. I mean, to me, you're kind of a you're a you're a force of nature, a beautiful, joyful, confident, never ending energy. You reach your arms out to everybody. You seem to always be there. You seem to always be on. Like, do you ever have days that you don't feel so good? And how do you manage that? I mean, how, how do you? How do you manage those days? First of all, thank you. And it's exactly I mean the way I see you. But um, first of all, we all have days like that. Um, but as you said, we are very good mask wearers. You know, we have the mask Particularly and the mask women. is, We're yeah. Very good. Uh, I always tell you, concealer, good concealer <laughs> yeah. is, is the key. <laughs> You've got better skin than me. I'm, I have albinism. Yeah, so. You know. so um, and, and I think that when you love what you're doing, and you believe in what you're doing, even when you have those downfalls, I, I really have l taught myself to get myself together. You know, I have, I have my collapse place, you know, <laughs> I have my, my but, but it's really for the cause. And, and, and when you believe it, it's like the adrenaline just washes away. That's the way I feel. Yeah, but one thing I'm always also very interested in, many of us who've been working in this play area of social change or social innovation, I mean, I guess there, everybody out there knows what it's like not to say no and never know when to rest or when to stop. Now, yes. I've got to say, I turned 50 a few months ago, so yes, I'm only my age. I'm actually learning how to slow down a bit and say no and just do less but better. I mean, is that I'm something... I'm not there yet. Yeah, but I'm just going to say... I'm 51 and I'm still... Uh <laughs> yeah, but like even then when I think about us less but better, we're still going 90 yeah. miles. Now, I'm not sure that's a really good role model for totally. younger leaders. I, I really don't because I don't think we need to burn ourselves out, Absolutely. do you? Absolutely, no. And I think that the balance is the key. Yeah, but how do you do that, Michael? I will get back to you once I find out. It's, <laughs> it's difficult. It's really difficult because it's also, you know, you... you you are drawn into it and you don't know when to stop and you collapse eventually. You know, you always have the ups and downs. Um, um, so so it's, it's a process. I'm still learning. I'm still young and learning. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Okay. You know, I've been, as I said, eight or nine years, I, I don't remember the count, uh, seeing you and seeing in the process of the idea and the dream and um, uh, turning it into something actual. Um, uh, valuable 500, and today you're even you're 
I don't know how you do it, but with an amazing staff. Um, each one I met is better than the, the other. It's, it's really amazing. And how does, how do you, how, are you taking the moment to look back and understand the achievement? And are you, how, how, how do you look now that it's really out there? It's, 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 it's happening. And in a way, it's happening even without you, which is a, an amazing accomplishment. Yeah, well, I, I think that's the, be the best. Um, it's the most proudest thing of all is that people want to work for the Valuable 500. I mean, really work for us, with us, and actually approach us for jobs. I was like, wow. And once we finally had funding, I, I think that was, it's still the greatest joy and the greatest pride for me that anybody wants to work with us. Um, and I really want to make myself obsolete <laughs> because no movement can be around one human being. It's just absolutely wrong and I've wanted that for so long. But honestly, the Valuable 500, I've been working in disability business inclusion for 22 years. So it was not an overnight success. I've yeah. done several initiatives, but every single moment was like a pebble to build the Valuable 500. Yeah. How do I feel today? I feel a huge hope and and responsibility that we activate this community not just to speak anymore not just to write commitments but to, to deliver systemic change i wish i could just be settled and go okay great we got to 500 but now i'm like no no how do we do it how do we get it to the 213 million companies in the world how do we create real collaboration how do we take all the systems in the world and help them work with each other to benefit you know the end of exclusion of people with disabilities right across our planet so I have to learn from what we've just said and go, sometimes you need to stop and stand still and go, yeah. Absolutely. And you know, I think that what you're saying and what I said, I in a way it's as if in this accessibility inclusion world, because it's so personal for all soul, it's yeah. an investment in all of our future and our family and our friends. Whenever we see a, um, a, a hilltop, we think that's yeah. the goal, we reach it, and then we see, oh wait, you know, we could stop here. A normal person might have stopped here, yeah. but there's another thing we can achieve, and if we did this, maybe we can even go farther. And, and in a way, if I'm talking to people who are doing this, don't stop in that, just find the balance. I think that's or the- Or uh, know why you're doing it. So for me, if there was one, there was two things I could say to anybody doing this work, you're not defined by this work. Do not let this work define who you are. It's what you do, it's your passion, and it's needed, and that purpose and passion is so important, but it is not who you are. And I think that is, it's a very hard thing when you get, we get so into it, yes. right? We just get so into yes. it. And then something um, Andreas Heineke and I were speaking about is know why you do the work, because yeah. you're right, it is personal. Yeah, yeah. But you know what, you have gotta look after yourself in this work, and I know it's said again and again and again, but I could not suggest it more and more and more. Take care of yourself first yeah. so that you can be a better leader. Sort out your shit, do your work, work it through, because then you'll know the times to stop and rest and to let go and to push. Absolutely. And that's really important. Absolutely. And as a closing, I will just say that if we go back to the title of this, <laughs> reach out. And especially in conferences reach like this and, and other, touch. totally. <laughs> reach out because somebody there wants to reach out back to you. That's the whole idea of the Zero Project and of the friendships that are formed yeah. here. And I couldn't agree more. You know what, we're like a, a set of Christmas tree lights. Every single one of yeah. us is a light on a big, massive wire together that we will look after each other as we try to change the world. Do not underestimate, you went on your own. I had such a ball. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs>